appear again as it has disappeared. So I just wanted to say a very warm welcome to everybody here this morning. We're absolutely delighted that so many of you could join us. Um, and this is our first seminar in relation to the circular economy. And we hope that it's the first of many with um, our business sector and community and voluntary sector as we make our way through the development of this hugely, hugely exciting strategy. So today would not have been possible um, if it wasn't for the support of Invest Northern Ireland. So a very special thank you to Invest um, for allowing us to um, share the knowledge that they have in terms of resource matching in their particular programme and also in terms of in international synergies with Elaine Care, um, who's going to deliver a presentation now very shortly in terms of the um, whole idea around resource matching and, and what it can do for your business and for your organisation. And of course, um, these types of webinars are just not possible without a huge effort um, behind the scenes. So a massive thank you to our economic development team, to Rose, Louise and Tara, and also to Anne Carlin in terms of our marketing officer and Paul Jackson, our digital services. So thanks so much for making this happen today. So we're going to um, very shortly have a, a presentation from Elaine in terms of the resource matching. But just I wanted to say, look, um, Council's really, really excited about this um, strategy. It's excited in the current climate um, in terms of the growing popularity and the growing energy around resource management and the need for greater resource efficiency and what better sectors in terms of the community and the business sector to work together to identify where somebody's waste might actually be somebody else's raw um, material, raw product. So um, after we hear from Elaine, we've got Nula from Invest Northern Ireland, who's going to give us an overview of some of the support that Invest can make available to organisations who want to explore this in a bit more detail. And then absolutely thrilled that we have a local business, um, Jill from Granola Goddess, who's going to give us some of their own experience in terms of how they've been able to use raw products, raw waste from another um, business and be able to um, transport that into their food and a very, very successful food business that it is. And then we've also got Jim from Zero Waste, um, who's going to give us an overview of some of the absolutely fantastic work that they have been doing in the last um, number of years. And then over to you, um, because it's your opportunity to ask some questions and answers. And then just to close, we'll give you some steps in terms of how we intend to take it forward. So we've got approximately an hour and some really, really fantastic information to share. So without further ado, I'm going to ask Elaine to start with her presentation. Just to let you know you're on mute. Well, that's a good start. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It's an absolute pleasure to be here with you and just to have this opportunity to, to talk a bit more about what we do in terms of industrial symbiosis. Um, I hopefully won't take too long. Um, please do ping through some questions via the chat messaging um, for us to pick up later on. Um, if you've got any anything in particular you want to ask about what we do and what uh, resource matching and industrial symbiosis actually is. Um, so particular thanks to Una for giving us this platform to share with you. Um, I've been very excited to watch what's happening in the Northwest around circular economy and um, I'm really hoping that um, as we move forward that um, that we'll be able to partner with you much more closely to support businesses and the community sector going forward. So who are we? Well, we're a team of five. We're a small team, really, in many respects, to be covering such a, a, a diverse region uh, with a very diverse range of businesses um, existing. And we're basically, as a company, we're a global expert in setting up industrial symbiosis or IS projects, as we call them around the world. We have another team based in Birmingham, who basically that is their main job, is, is going and supporting regions and industries and, and um 
um, whoever is, is looking to set these projects up. And it was really them that, that worked with Invest and I 13 years ago to get this project up and running. And we're absolutely delighted that we've been able to maintain, not just maintain the project, but to see it diverse, uh, but diversify and grow and, and reach further um, across Northern Ireland. Um, the team is very experienced. Um, we've got a good mix of, of, of um, industry expertise and knowledge within the team that is there for anyone who needs it. And we're really there to, to, to do whatever we can to help Northern Ireland as a region be more sustainable, more economically viable, um, and, and to, to balance those two things out. And really, um, what we do that primarily through the resource matching service that is supported by Invest and I, and as I said, has been operating from 2007. Um, little known fact, it is actually the longest running facilitated program in the world um, of its kind. Um, the, the only program that runs longer is Kallenberg, which is a very, very specific project. Um, and uh, ours is working with many more diverse and it's facilitated so that actually we can help find solutions for very diverse materials and resources within your company. So just to explain what industrial symbiosis is, um, it's really about extending the, life, the lifespan of a resource so that once it's of no further value to one company, it becomes that valuable raw material input for somebody else. And it's about mirroring what happens in our natural environment. If you look at the different ecosystems within our planet, around our planet, you will see things like a bird being able to sit within the mouth of an alligator crocodile and able to get its food from there without being eaten. That is symbiosis. It's a symbiotic relationship. The, the crocodile knows the value of that bird, that it's actually cleaning its mouth, it's taking away bacteria and it's actually doing something good. We would actually say that in our natural world, there is really no such thing as waste, that it's just that sometimes resources get misplaced, they get they get lost a little bit and they just need to find a solution. And that's what industrial symbiosis is attempting to do, is to find the alternative homes that resources can go to when you've finished with it within your organization, excuse me, within your organization or company. Over the years that we've been delivering, we have discovered that really it helps you to reduce your operating costs. It, vastly enhances your supply chains because it gives you a much more diverse um, range of businesses to be partnering with. And it can actually um, innovate and allow you to collaborate on some very unique projects within your organisation. And I think we'll hear a little bit more about that from uh, the Granola Goddess later on. And again, the environmental impact is big and hopefully this presentation will really show how all of that works as we go through. However, we're working in an economy and in a region that is being absolutely bomb blasted with, with barriers, challenges, um, things that are making it very, very difficult to actually achieve anything, um, if, if not everything, um, given the current COVID um, pandemic that's, that's really decimating companies' abilities to be productive, to be sustainable, um, to, to have longevity. Um, I don't really want, need to go into that in any more detail. You all know what I'm talking about. Continual lockdowns, continual um, issues that are just making it very, very difficult to work. When you add that in to the whole uncertainty around Brexit and what's going to happen, you know, beyond 31st of December, major, major resource issues are going to arise. And there's a real need to be thinking about this now and thinking about how circular economy could actually help our region become more green, become more sustainable, and more self-sufficient. And I believe that industrial symbiosis can actually add real value in there to that. When you also look at the global situation where certain markets have closed their doors to what we would consider our waste, Northern Ireland tends to export most of its waste out of the, the country and off to somewhere else, which has been very handy. But actually, I would argue, isn't always the most responsible thing to do. And I believe that there are opportunities within our own economy for us to be taking what is considered our waste and finding reuse, recycling options for those materials within Northern Ireland that would actually generate new businesses, new economy opportunities. 
uh, for the region and put us really at a very, very strong position uh, going forward. Obviously, we've got the whole climate change thing going on as well, which I'm not belittling in any shape or form. It's a massive, massive issue and we really need to be doing something. But I hope that you'll catch the good news today. Symbiosis and resource matching will actually help with that significantly within your organisation, within your region and within Northern Ireland as a whole. So I'm a big advocate of saying that profitability and sustainability can go hand in hand. Um, it, it, there's a lot of in, things that influence that, behaviour change, attitudes, um, existing business models, current supply chains, all have to be looked at in order to achieve it, but it's not impossible. And we have over 500 companies in Northern Ireland who are on their resource efficiency journey through industrial symbiosis and through applying resource matching techniques to all, a whole range of, of resources that come up within their company. When you look at the business model, which is what I want to just touch on now in terms of what industrial symbiosis is, a lot of lo older businesses um, have really worked on a, a linear economy where you take, make and dispose of your waste and you just get rid of it. It's no longer your responsibility. You hand it over to somebody else. The circular economy is basically saying we can't continue to do that. We need to be encouraging resources to be used again and again and again as much as possible within our um, within our region and within in our, our world as possible. And I think this little diagram at the bottom really highlights where the use reuse opportunities actually exist. And um, if I had more time today, I could give you examples across all of these um, levels where resources can be used, reused, remanufactured and recycled, even from waste management companies. And I have one of those examples coming up a bit later in my presentation. And, you know, it's all about reusing the materials so that we're actually protecting this area at the very start where we've got material extraction. The natural resources within our planet are finite and they're running short. And our attitude in terms of waste management has meant that we're actually been putting where we've taken out good stuff, we've been putting the bad stuff back into those holes. I suppose is another way to look at it. And really what we're doing there is, is untenable. We are have a planet that is um is really struggling to to have a a really, really, really good future ahead of itself. And we need to be looking at what we're doing within the industry sector, within business sector, about what we're doing or what is what we're doing responsible. Um, not just for us, not just in terms of putting more pennies in our pockets, but in terms of the planet and, and, and our approach to it in the longer term. And really what we have found is that by focusing on recycling, reusing, reclaiming and avoiding generating waste in the first place, it has a double whammy for your company. It's the most cost effective option is to avoid generating the waste in the first place. If you think about it, if you're not generating waste, you don't have to find someone else to take it away. You're not paying for your bins and um, for the material to go into. So looking at your productivity, looking at how you how you're actually processing and producing goods and products. Can you do that better so that you're not actually generating waste in the first place? And then looking at ways in which you can reclaim or find reclaim homes for, for materials that you can no longer use. Again, reusing those as well and recycling those. Um, we have some really good recycling companies operating here in Northern Ireland um, and there are opportunities, particularly for plastics, to be recycled. And there's a lot of really good work going on within our educational establishments, particularly our universities and around resource, uh, sorry, around research and development, which are really off, um, going to, over the next number of years, provide some innovative solutions for us moving forward for materials that currently we, we just don't have a solution for. And that's what this is all about. It's a process. It's it, it can be seen as a quick hit and a quick win if you've got a material sitting there that you need to find a solution for. But maybe for your actual process waste or a raw material packaging that's coming in that you don't need once you've once you've taken the raw material out of it, 
we need to be looking at how to make those materials more sustainable. And that's a long term project. And that's where councils and um, Invest and I and other people can have a really big input into helping to achieve um, sustainability and profitability across all of these levels. If you think about the current disposal rate to landfill for a ton of material is probably around about £100 or thereabouts. Um, when you add on to that any transportation costs, storage costs and all the hidden management costs within your organisation, we estimate that your per ton dis uh, disposal cost is about £150. And if you've got a ton of waste a month, a week even, multiply that by, by 52. That's 520 tonnes of waste a year and multiply that by £150. That's a significant amount of your revenue as a business that's just going into having materials disposed of. Now, it doesn't suit all companies to actually be able to, to do this. Um, very small companies need to look at this in a slightly different way and make sure that the, the waste management companies that they're employing will actually find reuse and recycling homes for as much of their material as possible because small businesses can't afford to be segregating all waste, waste streams out. But segregation of your resource streams will help as your business grows and as it gains momentum and particularly as your productivity becomes more, um, more challenging and, and more beneficial. This slide is, is just taken from our food sector that we've worked with over the last 13 years. And what I've really wanted to do is just highlight the waste hierarchy endpoints. So uh, reclaiming, reusing and recycling is where we prefer materials to go. But even within the food sector, you can see there's very little of their material actually going to when it to waste um, energy from waste um, disposal. Most of it's coming into the recycling, reusing and reclaiming sphere as far as we're concerned and the, the materials that we're actually matching. And that is really exciting for us just to see that, you know, one company's waste within the food sector, a lot of those resources are going into completely different sectors. They're not staying within the food sector. They're going to somebody else who can take those materials and upcycle them and reuse them for um, whatever. And you can see the diversity of resources is really quite broad. You know, you've got mixed materials there as well, but you've got very specifically plastic. A large proportion of that is reclaimed and reused and recycled within Northern Ireland. And that's really, really positive good news story that needs to be sung about a little bit more across all industry sectors. Um, again, processed byproduct, this is within the food sector. So a lot of their processed byproduct is actually food waste. The majority of that is reclaimed and sent into anaerobic digestion, which we aren't uh, putting in as waste to energy here. We've we've put it in at a slightly higher level. Um, so, you know, it's really, really important that, you, that you're aware of that, that this image could actually be replicated across nearly all re, nearly all industry sectors across Northern Ireland and that no resource as far as we're concerned is, is really too difficult. Um, some of them are challenging but that we, we enjoy that challenge and we enjoy the opportunity of trying to find solutions and looking globally to see what other countries are doing uh, with particular resource stream. But I wanted to share with you a couple of stories specifically around the Northwest of, of what we've actually been doing. And this, this one is, is hopefully going to be um, developed into a video over the, the next month or two uh, by Invest and I for us. And, and really, we've worked with Frylight from, from when we first started here. And it was really in 2010 that we started to get a proper handle on the resource streams, the waste wasted resource streams that they had. And you can see from the different stepping stones there that it's been very much a journey for the Frylight. Um, about 2014, 2015, they then diversified their business. Frylight, um, for those of you who don't know, are a waste oil or an, a cooking oil um, production and recycling company. So they would work with businesses from your little chippy on the corner right through to the very large food production companies, um, taking, delivering um, cooking oil to them, taking the waste oil away 
and cleaning that up so that it can actually be used again in a number of different formats for different things as well as back into a cooking oil again. So they were very, they very much have that idea of recycling and, and reusing built within their DNA as an organisation. And um, so it's been it's been relatively maybe easy to work with them on some of these synergies that we've done. In 2010, one of the practitioners that we have went into the company and discovered that actually part of their um, production process, or sorry, in 2014, that part of their production process was actually still involved an awful lot of manual handling and was actually um, causing some difficulties. Because our network of businesses is so diverse and so complex, we were actually able to refer them to a company who could actually provide them with um, a piece of equipment that allowed that manual handling to be taken over by a piece of equipment. That drastically reduced their um, health and safety issues around spillages, around um, loss of, of valuable material as well, and enabled them to really um, achieve some good savings for themselves as a company. Now, the cost savings that are listed here don't just refer to fry light and food waste diversion. This is with the companies that we match them with as well. And it's really important to remember that, that, that just because it's no longer of value to you doesn't mean that everyone else will want to pay for that material to take it off you. Some people need to get that material free of charge because of the amount of processing that they will be doing to make it of value again. So it's really important to remember that whilst there are cost savings there, it's not always a 50-50 win between companies. It can be 100% for one company and zero for another or any kind of range in between. Um, when the food waste diversion, or sorry, when the food waste regulations were um, being muted by the Environment Agency and being communicated out to the business sector, um, Frylight talked with us quite considerably about how they could um, really make good use of that, given the fact that we have a number of anaerobic digestion plants running, operating across Northern Ireland. And they saw the opportunity to really diversify just from oil collection and, and production to actually doing something similar with the food waste. So they set up food waste diversion as their um, support mechanism to all the businesses that they have been working with. And really since then, we've done a number of synergies where we've been able to introduce um, food production companies, hotels, catering facilities, restaurants, back to not just food waste diversion, but to other organisations like them that can take those materials and make sure that they end up getting best value out of those materials, either through composting or anaerobic digestion. Following on from that as a, as a little last story around uh, this particular company, um, they, we would host what's called resource matching workshops um, several times a year. And it's the, think about speed dating for business resources, just to, to sort of make that a bit more um, relevant and how in the world does that work? And at one of those workshops, um, the representative from Food Waste Diversion was actually sitting at the same table as somebody else working in the Lisburn area, who uh, Food Waste Diversion put out that they were looking for some parking space for their lorries because they were paying for all the lorries every day to travel up and down from Straban to Belfast because a lot of their food waste diversion work was happening in and around the greater Belfast area. That company in Lisburn was able to facilitate that and provide some parking space, which allowed Frylight and Food Waste Diversion to actually investigate opening a, another depot in the Lisburn area. And that depot is is open it has either opened at the end of September or is due to open within the next month or so um, and will continue to be um, a real cost saving solution for them for their business as a whole so although we work specifically around physical resources our knowledge of the Northern Ireland industry sector and who's doing what can actually bring added value to your company in, in maybe quite unusual ways. So, um, so do talk to us about those things. Um, I wanted to give you a bit of a taste of the kind of companies that we've actually been working with across Northern Ireland. And this is only the tip of the iceberg of what we've been doing in the Northwest. We've hosted many very successful resource matching workshops. Um, we've 
gone into many of these companies and walked through them, looked at their wasted resources, looked at their processing systems and been able to offer advice, introductions, um, referrals to other organisations that can provide solutions better than us sometimes um, to a whole range of businesses. And you can see that probably almost every industry sector is represented in this slide. I hope it is because that was my intention with this slide. Um, so you've got companies here that can offer solutions to some companies and other companies that are generating waste streams or resources that, that they need to find solutions for. And uh, we, we've worked with all of these companies, both large and small, to try and help them be more resource efficient and to achieve the cost savings that they require. And this story is really one that um, that hit way beyond what we sort of expected. We were approached actually by a waste management company who was dealing with um, with these um, safeguarding textile resources, safeguarding textile basically produce um, emergency um, equipment and uh, clothing across a range of industry sectors and had produced all of these for a particular contract that was then cancelled. And they were left with, I think it was 17,000 17, of these um, emergency sleeping blankets with no solution for them. And the waste management company came to us and said, look, can you help us to find some homes for this? We initially tried to look at the main um, criteria that are working globally, but to be honest, none of them wanted to have to pay for the transportation of these to crisis hit areas globally around the world. And so we, we put the call out more locally. We have a very good relationship with Hardship and, and organisations that are listed here and um, basically between these five organisations they sucked up all of those um, sleeping bags and those are now being used for people who are homeless or living on the streets who for whatever reason need um, a sleeping bag at night as an emergency aid and it's it's really you know it's it's an avoided a considerable impact onto the environment. You know, seven tonnes of landfill diversion doesn't seem like much, but when you consider that these materials are being directly used for for what they were intended for, in fact, for better than what they were intended for, they were intended for a one-off use, and now they're being used as a regular um, uh, um, extra layer um, for those who are homeless and sleeping on the streets. Um, and, and so, you know, the, the value of, of industrial symbiosis does go beyond landfill diversion. It goes beyond the penny in your pocket. It goes out into the community and helping some of those people who are most at need. And we've done a range of stuff with this. Um, some of the furniture that um, comes out of hotels that are refurbishing both in the Northwest and across Northern Ireland, including sanitary wear, has actually gone to other organisations that can take those materials and use them to help those who are most disadvantaged to improve their homes, to improve their livelihoods and to improve their um, their own skills and education as well, because a lot of the materials end up as training materials for for teaching new skills as well across the province. And that those, those are very very hard to to calculate that kind of knock on benefits, but it's there and it's significant for Northern Ireland if we're, we're able to help with those kinds of things. This slide is really just to help you see that really. The range of resources that we can actually help with is, is extensive. Um, a lot of our synergies would tend to focus around packaging waste, um, processing waste and redundant materials. Those are sort of the three categories. But within those three categories, you've got a whole range of diverse materials. If you think in terms of solvent, um, any organ, any and your manufacturing company that is working with solvents will find that they, when the solvent has been spent and used by them, it's of no value to them. And they're, what they would have to pay to have that material taken away and cleaned up before it can even be disposed of is quite significant. There is an organisation in Northern Ireland who can actually provide those manufacturing companies with a piece of kit that allows them to recycle the solvent and reclaim up to 90% of the solvent. 
that is a significant saving for those companies being able to do that. And it, it, it's a really, really beneficial solution for many companies to be able to invest in that piece of kit that allows them to do that. It means that they're not having to pay either for, vi for very expensive raw material. They can reuse the solvents a second, sometimes even a third or fourth time before it's so badly spent that it can't be recycled. So there are there are lots of opportunities out there, um, really for companies, and we've we've seen over the last couple of years a real increase in engagement from the entrepreneurs, people like uh, World uh, World City Brewery and uh, the Green and sorry Granola Goddess, who really want to embed circular economy principles within what they're doing, and would very often come to us and say, where can I find sources of such and such a material? So we've had um, design um, gurus coming to us and saying, I want all my product to be made out of recycled lorry tarps or out of other um, denim or other materials that are being discarded by other companies across Northern Ireland. And whilst they can't take at the minute large quantities, as those, build, as those companies grow, gain momentum, they will be able to take more and more of those materials. So we're, we're helping businesses really from startup right through to the large multinational businesses to actually improve what they're doing and, and to, to be sustainable and productive as well. We've also discovered that there's a whole range of business drivers and that these business drivers are also benefits of industrial symbiosis. Um, they involve not just the physical resources, but the financial resources, the people resources and your intangible resources within your organisation. So things like new product development, um, Camden, uh, Glass, who produce uh, PVC windows and doors, came to us um, looking to develop a recycling plant where they could actually take back in all the post-industrial, post-domestic um, PVC uh, windows that were being taken out before when new product was going in. And they have been able to now recycle um, quite a considerable quantity of material here in Northern Ireland, so much so that they're actually now um, rolling a similar process out across some of their other plants across the rest of the UK. And some of the product, actually, some of the waste streams actually come back here to Northern Ireland from across in England as well to find alternative homes here as well. So product development has been a big one where companies are looking to ensure that their new products have a recycled content within them really. And that, that has been a big driver for many businesses. Another driver is legal compliance. You can imagine yourselves that if you get on the wrong side of the environment agency, you can not just have bad press, but you can be hit with all kinds of penalties, fines, and even stop notices. By applying industrial symbiosis, and the principles of that within your organisation and ensuring that everyone within your company has bought into the behavioural change that's required in terms of, of handling of resources within the company can really improve your legal compliance. Um, and that can have a massive hit for you in terms of positivity, being able to give you good news stories. We've had a whole range of companies from hotels through to manufacturing companies winning awards um, because of what they've been able to to do not just through um, industrial symbiosis, but through applying other resource efficiency techniques as well that Invest and I have been able to help them with too. Also globally, we are across the EU in particular, we have the sustainable development goals. And um, many businesses now have those written into their um, into their business model and part of their ethos and what they're trying to do. And obviously, because we naturally calculate how much is being diverted from landfill and have a tool that allows us to calculate the CO2 saving in and around that and the furniture material saving, that really can help a business on their sustainability goal to, to, to achieve that. And that knocks on to their ISO 14000 and, and other um, IS standards that they are other standards that they're aiming to to meet as a business. Um, so it can be very much, it can fit in 
dealing with a whole range of different needs within your organisation, as well as the productivity, the general productivity and cost savings that I've already mentioned considerably um, through this presentation. And this is a, a really a look. I, I did a, a quick search on our database to see whole range of different resources that have been used in what we call live synergies. So that's where the, it's gone from an idea where two companies start talking to where the resources actually have exchanged and the benefits are being seen by both companies. And you can see it's across all resource streams. You've got metals, textiles, minerals, glass, rubber, food and drink, surplus equipment and, and furniture, packaging, wood and plastics. Um, and, you know, all of these resources resources are finding homes predominantly in Northern Ireland. Some of the resources have had to go outside of Northern Ireland to get benefit because they've been so complex, but the majority are staying within Northern Ireland and, and getting their solution here. So just to, to put into context the economic and the environmental benefits, to date we've, we've achieved over 42, 43 million pounds in economic benefits to Northern Ireland businesses. Um, that's split between additional sales, cost savings and where companies have seen a brilliant opportunity to invest in, in new technology, in new processes, in, in making their business better. And through that, it's also created and saved over 104 jobs. That's the economic value. The environmental value is just as strong. There's at least 400,000 tonnes of material that's been diverted from landfill. That's probably quite um, at times uh, a conservative figure. Um, with that, you've got the CO2 emission reduction of 374,000 tonnes associated just by diverting materials from landfill. Not every company is in a place to, to be able to, to calculate additional CO2 savings around no longer having to have the material transported across regions, across countries um, to having a solution much more local, but there are additional benefits there. And uh, we've a database of, of about two and a half thousand companies um, and social enterprises across Northern Ireland from all industry sectors, and all of those are getting some value going back into their business, whether they at this stage they've actually managed to resource match or not. They're getting benefit from working with us from, from even just, I mean, with, with some companies with one very large um, food and drink company, I think it took them two to three years to do the behavioural change before they could even start to resource match because they needed to to roll out a whole education process across the industry across their company, so that they could the company was then in a place to start segregating resources appropriately and finding better processing solutions for for materials that shouldn't have been wasted in the first place. So really, um, you know, that that's really me. Um, there's so many different ways for you to get involved with us. We're, we're free to use as a service across Northern Ireland because of the support that we receive from Invest Northern Ireland. You don't, do, don't have to be an Invest and I client company to avail of our support. We have a team of practitioners who are available to conduct either a virtual or physical site visit with you to talk about where where your resource itches are and to try and find solutions for them. We, we will provide those introductions to you. We can help when maybe those discussions are getting into difficulties and maybe, you know, that solution isn't working. Companies are encouraged to come back to us and say, that one didn't work out. Can you introduce me to somebody else? So there, and again, sometimes it's a matter of referring on for R&D support for, for specific issues or barriers that are, are arising. Um, so, you know, do get in touch with us. Um, we're here to support businesses of all shapes and sizes in Northern Ireland. And uh, we'd be delighted to provide that support to you um, over the, the coming weeks, months and years. Elaine, that's absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for such a detailed presentation and some really insightful um, information there. And particularly, I think that the fact that people realise that it's a journey, that it's not something that, you know, they're going to transform their business operations um, in a short period of time. And really around that whole behavioural change and the motivators for why they want to do it in the first place. So 
the, a lot to um, digest there and um, really, really hopefully a lot of people will come back now in terms of follow up, in terms of um, exploring some of those ideas further with you. And then that's probably quite timely in terms of Nula's presentation because um, Nula will give us some of the overview in terms of the financial support Northern Ireland can also provide in terms of anybody um, thinking along these lines. So Nula, just over to you now. So Nula, just to let you know, you're still on silence, you're on mute. Hi, is that me now, you know? That's you now. Perfect, Lilla. Thank you. Thank you. I just I lost the screen there to enable me to come out of mute. Apologies about that, folks. I'll just get my presentation up now, okay? Okay, so can can you see that okay, everybody, the, the PowerPoint presentation? We can indeed, Nilla, thank you. Thanks. Apologies, this is the first uh, time I've used this system, so thank you for your patience. And it's a pleasure to be here today, and um, Elaine, thank you for your presentation. Um, as Una has explained, I'm the Energy and Resource Efficiency Programme Manager in Invest NI. I really appreciate this opportunity to collaborate with Derry and Strabane District Council on this very exciting journey that you are embarking upon on the circular economy, and it's, it's a very interesting event. This obviously comes at a, a critical time, as we know, and as we move forward to build resilience and to continue to recover from COVID-19. And we are, you know, in Invest and I seeing key themes coming through, such as decarbonisation and the green economy and green growth becoming more and more important in terms of how we do business. So Invest NI's energy and resource efficiency team is, is here to help organisations along this journey and to provide you with the information and tools to build resilience and to future proof your business. It's often in times of uncertainty like this, we're actually innovating and becoming, um, you know, capitalising on different ideas can actually help to sustain your business in the long run. So we can enable your business to secure lasting benefits such as cost savings and also carbon and environmental savings and waste minimization, which has wider benefits for your business and to optimize your business operations and make them as efficient as possible now and in the future. So what are the goals of energy and resource efficiency at Invest and I? We're obviously an economic development agency, but within our team, we do have a very specialist area now to improve a business's productivity, to enhance your competitiveness and sustainability through the identification and realization of cost savings opportunities through better use of materials, water and energy. So that's that's our goal, and you know it's really looking and homing in at your operational costs. You know the use of raw material, waste, and water, and really to see how we can help you actually reduce your bottom line and and increase and make those quick wins to increase your productivity. And now that we have heard all about resource matching, you know, in very specific case studies, an example of of how Lane and her team have integrated within businesses across Northern Ireland through our industrial symbiosis and the benefits that that can offer your business. I'm going to briefly take you through some of our schemes and um, support and services that might enable you to start your journey um, and even enhance your, your, your plans around circular economy and waste minimization. Some of these schemes that we have include, for example, a technical uh, consultancy framework, resource matching through industrial symbiosis, a resource efficiency capital grant, and a broad range of advice and events that are available to all companies in Northern Ireland. So where do you begin? It's often uh, we find that energy and resource efficiency can be quite a challenge for organisations. And sometimes it's actually hard 
to know where to begin and with very much at the present, you know, major competing issues within a business. Um, often you maybe just need access to some support to look at these issues. So our, we do have a team of in-house technical advisors and experts who are sort of specialists within a variety of different areas in this area and have experience in working with a wide range of businesses and sectors across Northern Ireland over a number of years. So they're available you know, currently to discuss the challenges that your businesses or organisations may be facing and to guide you in finding the right solutions for your business needs. Um, and they start off with, you know, maybe arranging a virtual meeting, a site visit to discuss your key areas, your key priorities and put in place an action plan to improve. So I would encourage you to get in touch to access this bespoke and it's very much one to one advice provided by our technical advisors. To go into some greater detail then in terms of our support, I mentioned the technical consultancy support. And what it is, is our technical consultancy framework offers up to five days fully funded technical audits, including feasibility analysis of a particular issue, advice, completion of a report and recommendations, which should be fully costed. They should indicate payback to help your business identify cost and carbon savings. You may be interested in, in, for example, looking at general energy usage uh, through an energy audit to get an overall understanding of where your businesses can make improvements. Or you may already have a project in mind and we're certainly more than happy to tap into what exact location you are with your plans. For example, you may have interest in renewable energy or perhaps process optimization if you're a manufacturing company or um, an SME starting out looking at how you can optimize and, and use of raw material and technology on site. Or you may have an idea how to minimize product packaging. Again, that's something we can look at. So using our framework of independent specialist consultants, we can source and fund a consultancy project for your business. And we can actually run maybe one or two at a time if there's different topics that you require support on. Um, given the effects of COVID, we're also facilitating a virtual delivery. We converted the technical consultancy to a virtual method of support to enable that support to continue in a remote access basis. And uh, that would apply also for Elaine's Industrial Symbiosis Service. So our consultants are available to work with you remotely and to help your business save energy, even in these current times. Our technical consultancy support is available to all businesses and the wider business base across Northern Ireland with an energy and resource resource use spend in excess of 30,000 per annum. So that would include, for example, raw material use, water, energy consumption. This may include also heating and uh, waste management costs, but it's something that you can talk through with a technical advisor or with your client executive to tease out if you meet that criterion. To give you an idea then of some of the specific areas within this framework that is, you know, it is a very popular framework that we, we run and um, the consultancy is available in a wide range of areas, as you can see, um, you know, if you home in, for example, on the resource efficiency and waste management systems or energy management and efficiency, they, you know, haven't been a technical advisor in Northern Ireland for a number of years myself and working with companies. I know that they can be a very useful starting point. They actually ascertain where you are now in terms of your consumption of raw material or energy or water and setting in place KPIs, setting in place um, some benchmarking against other organisations in your sector to see are you doing well or you could improve. Um, so often I would encourage that monitoring and measuring as, as, a, as a very useful starting point. But equally, if you've sort of, you know, um, got some quick wins from that, there is very specialist advice around alternative technologies, you know, renewable technologies, looking at your packaging, how you can maybe reduce, minimise packaging. And even from a circular economy point of view, advice about how you can design out potentially, you know, the use of materials in your production to that would be the ultimate really in terms of the waste hierarchy where you're minimising the use of a raw material very much at source and you're not even at the point of reusing it. So, which is obviously very useful and something we can provide advice on, but there's that wide range of where we can enter in to help you with a sort of circular 
uh, economy approach. And we also have that very specific, as you can see there, um, sustainable business collaborations, including circular economy um, criteria under the framework also. Um, so there's quite a wide range there. And I would really encourage, you know, if you meet the criteria in that framework to avail of that support, because as I said, it's a very useful starting point. It can enable a prioritization of actions and it, it costs it out for you and can give you a plan to maybe go to um, managers or colleagues to say, oh, we'll look at this this year. We'll see what funding we can get and we'll move forward from there. Um, Elaine has, you know, provided a very comprehensive overview there of the resource matching um, service through industrial symbiosis. So I won't go into greater detail really, but as, as Elaine has said, it, it, it is a really useful program in helping to identify alternative use of materials in your processes and your um, operations. And, and obviously reaping wins are in terms of, you know, if you're not having to procure that raw material in the first place and reuse it, it's, it's of obvious benefit to the business and very much relevant given uncertainty around COVID and the supply of material, even in a post sort of EU exit situation where material may take longer, it could be more costly. So it really is an opportune moment to look at your raw materials in use within your organisations. So in terms of some financial support, Una, you mentioned we do have currently a capital grant and some further info on it. A resource efficiency capital grant is available to invest in iClan companies currently, and it provides a grant to support investment in resource efficiency technologies. So, you know, I've talked about the technical consultancy framework there. That can be a sort of advisory method to determine how you can improve upon a, a particular process. Um, and if eligible, then this grant can come in and actually uh, assist you to implement it. So it really provides a grant to invest in, as I said, resource efficiency technologies that will drive savings in the use of materials. Um, and inevitably, that can result in improvements in productivity and competitiveness by its very nature. So grants are up, available of up to 40,000 um, to help with the purchasing of new equipment, which will reduce the consumption of water, raw materials or waste production. And the way we sort of uh, run this scheme is that we run competitive calls for grant support and our next call is anticipated around spring of next year. So certainly, as I said, if you're interested in this support and you would be eligible, please get in touch with ourselves and our technical advisors can talk through a process and the eligibility criteria. Or if you have something in mind that you maybe think is a good idea to sort of, um, you know, maybe change a method of production within your business, get in touch and we can get the ball and roll in terms of, as I said, that technical advisory framework, maybe five days of support to actually tease it out further and build your case around it. And that will inevitably help you with the application stage. So many, many companies find that useful just to, to, to start the ball rolling with that. And um, finally, then, oh, sorry, I'll give you uh, some ideas of the machinery. Actually, I've, I've, I've jumped on there a wee bit, but some of the ideas of machinery that would be funded under the capital grant would include um, to give you that sense would be include maybe a better paint booth, spray booth where you're minimizing the use of paint in production, plasma cutters, um, CNC machines. Say, for example, you're moving from a manual, uh, a very much manual operated system, and you can integrate, you know, a, a CNC machine that will be much more accurate, much more efficient in terms of production and minimize waste offcuts, for example, or um, just the use of material, make, make much better use of material in process. That's the type of thing that and, and similar would apply to water. You know, if you're going to minimize water through particular systems like coolant management systems and um, injection molding machines and um, vegetable peelers all sort of have come through in the grant. Uh, previously in terms of our calls and demonstrated where they can save in raw material consumption. And finally, then just, you know, this is a very useful source. If you're at the, the, the start of this journey or, or at any point, we have a bank of best practice that's been developed over a number of years in terms of guidance that can be useful for a company to upskill themselves to increase their capability in house as to how they're going to start with this, you know, so if you're using a lot of compressed air, variable speed drives, um, refrigeration, coolant, lighting, uh, the metering and the monitoring, which I mentioned, which I think is a very useful starting point. 
um, packaging optimization and obviously waste minimization. There's there's a raft of um, advice there within investini.com that's accessible to all organisations across um, Northern Ireland and, and certainly of, of much use. So in conclusion, you know, that was a very, very quick um, run through. And, and as I said, I would encourage you to engage with whether myself or other colleagues and as technical advisors in the team. Um, but you can see some of the benefits there um, that of energy and resource efficiency support for businesses across Northern Ireland is is, is evident through our, our funding of our programmes. Um, and we, we continue to do that, our programmes in place for another four years. So there's very much um, much broader environmental and sort of circular economy benefits. It can improve competitiveness and productivity and enable you to compete with other companies in your sector and globally. Um, and that does have a sort of obvious wider benefit in terms of contributing to a lower green economy. And uh, it can accelerate the, the clean growth plans for Northern Ireland by enhancing our expertise and our innovation. And it obviously embeds and raises awareness of sustainability issues within an organisation and, and helps you to actually implement change. So on that basis, I'll, I'll, I'll finish off and I would like you to thank you for listening and I hope you find that useful. And certainly I would encourage you to get in touch with our team um, at any point. Thank, thank you very much. No, that was fantastic. Thanks so much. Um, again, a really brilliant presentation and fantastic just in terms of knowing how many people have already gone through this, how many businesses and the support that's available to them. So thank you very much for that. Um, You're for welcome. Queries, thank you. In the chat there, um, it's available after today's meeting. We'll send them out with a, a follow-up email. And um, Jim's asking, are we closing at 12 o'clock? No, we've do, we can go beyond the 12 o'clock. So um, delighted now that we have a presentation from Jill and James. We've got a few questions that we want to ask, and then we'll be moving on to Jim. So we probably think we'll finish up maybe now at this stage about quarter past, 20 past 12, if everybody's OK um, to stay on until then. So um, Jill and James wanted to speak to you about your fantastic business and um, to hear more about Granola Goddess. And just, I suppose, Jill, from your perspective, um, where did this idea come from? And if you could maybe just give us a wee bit of background in relation to it. Yes, uh, good morning. Can you hear me OK there, folks? We can indeed, yeah. OK. Um, good morning. That was very informative, by the way, Ilian and Nola. Thank you for all of that. Um, uh, well, the idea for my product came about whenever I was working in the brewery with my brother, um, which I was a head chef or executive head chef for at the time. Um, it actually came about a conversation James and I had around 2016, um, that long ago, um, where there was a surplus of the spent grain left over from brewing the beer. Um, now, spent grain is um, the product that's actually usually disposed of by breweries to go to compost or animal feed. So we knew that it already had been used in some sort of way. It had been um, not disposed of via waste, but as such, but reused in some way. So um, we actually looked into I looked into it and researched it a bit further to see if actually we could use it um, for human consumption. And um, it, we were aware of a company in Galway that had been making um, dog biscuits using the spent grain. So I looked into it further and researched online to find a company in San Francisco who were using the spent grain to make granola um, biscuits or rather to use granola bars. So um, they that was the first sort of the, the first time I realized that maybe there's a possibility here we could use it to do loose grain granola, um, which I end up doing. Um, I looked into different programs um, from the Dairy City and Savannah District Council, um, and they were very informative and helpful in terms of mentoring. Through the Business Boost program, I approached Bootivation here in the Northwest, and uh, they were very useful or very helpful as well. And also Invest NI, which helped me to conduct market research to go to San Francisco to visit Regrant um, and meet with them and find out what their processes were and how they worked and so and also then to get some ideas on how I would go about myself. Brilliant. Um, 
just in terms of, I suppose, your, your own experience of seeing it, um, seeing it firsthand in terms of another business, Jill. But, so it's one thing to see that, but then to convert that and come back home, how difficult was it in terms of making it a reality in terms of an actual business? Um, it actually wasn't that complicated, to be honest with you. I think that the main um, the main issues for me were um, that I had it was a relatively unexplored area, and the use of spent grain in a food product. I mean, you have to understand that it was essentially a waste product. So it's getting around that. That was a that was a big area of um, uh, which was at the time it wasn't really it hadn't been talked about before. So I think. Um, I need to find out how easy or feasible it would have been to at the time to to use the grain and to use it safely in in a, in a in a food product. So I had my own ideas for recipes. Um, I also had my ideas of packaging and design, which I was help I was helped by my sister with. James was more than happy to give me the grains straight out of the vat and uh, I say and use it. But it was more of a question of you know. Is, is it possible for me to take the grain and put it into a food product in order for it to be retailed and sold to you know to the consumers? I think that was where industrial symbiosis um, came in and where I was given some advice there. So um, yeah, in terms of financial help, I didn't really get that much. And um, I had to support it myself and test it out in the markets around Northern Ireland in terms of local markets, regional and down south so to find out if it was actually a product that people wanted to buy um but and, and start off from there which i did in 2018. and for any would-be businesses here online today what advice would you give them about resource matching um so um would you find it easier to source the raw materials um rather than use um the existing ones um <laughs> I say do your research. I say yes, definitely find out um, if you're, for example, that the likes of spent grain is is as handy for the fact that they it's it's ready grain ready producing, you know, many kilos of the stuff after the brain process. So, I I was I'm able to take that, freeze it, to use it, but it it does it is a it is a three stage process. I mean, I have to take it, I have to freeze it because as you know, there's so much of the time I have to store it somewhere. I have to then defrost it. I have to dry it, which takes about eight hours or nine hours drying in the oven, and then add my own different other ingredients or raw materials into it. So, um, do your costings as well because the running costs of drying the actual grain um it uh, they're quite high and it might not be feasible for you to do it so and check out the protocols for waste waste management and find out if it is um if it is possible to go ahead with it with what what restrictions you have for example i can't take the spent grain off site i have to use it on the site of the brewery and if you take it away from there you're going to have to get a waste management license so that's the sort of thing you have to consider brilliant and james how has it worked for you it's it's worked it's worked brilliantly um as i said jill jill is definitely the the pioneer here um we have uh, in terms of the spent grain itself so we've we've sort of three waste streams coming from the brewing process um spent grain is actually just the barley with the sugar removed from it which we then convert into a beer we have uh, spent yeast which is sometimes used for sort of pig feed and then hops which which you can't do a lot with um but certainly from my background yeah, as you'll, um we would have sent on thousands of tons of, of spent grain to mostly cattle feed. Um, so certainly we never, I, I never heard of it being sort of almost upcycled to, to a consumer product. So, um, and it's almost come full circle now where, where Jill being executive chef um, spotted the spent grain, it makes it into the granola now, and then we now serve that in the, in the restaurant um, as well. So it's, there, there's, there's, there's a there's a wonderful circle there, you know, and, and the product's fantastic. So it's been great in terms of it's relieved um, the pressure off us from composting the grain. Um, and, and it's a great story. So, um, yeah. Absolutely. And do you think will you do anything with your spent barley or your spent yeast? Yeah, the, 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 there's there's opportunities there in terms of the, um spent yeast can be turned. That's a lot of that actually goes into sort of marmite and stuff. So there's there's definitely opportunities there. but. 
uh, really uh, as we get bigger as a brewer it will be uh, that that's pro that's sometimes the the problem for for Joe that we sometimes don't have enough spent grain for which in which case she usually feeds that back quite robustly so that's the only <laughs> problem with the supply chain at the minute um if we're not brewing for example during lockdown then that may run short um but but yeah as we get bigger as a brewery there'll be certainly more a lot more opportunities there for it fantastic and do you think both um James, you and Jill, is this a uniqueness in terms of your marketing that you think that you're more appealing because of the circular nature and that it's more attractive then to consumers? Um, I think, yeah, people are more aware of, of the whole sustainability of products nowadays. And I think, I think people are more, um, they're very interested in my product. They think it's, it's unique. Um, they think it's 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 something they like to see something that is taking something that off, often goes to other areas like composting and, and it can be used back into the product and it tastes good too. So um, and also um, I know that from speaking to somebody recently who was doing a bit of research into spent grain, um, she said to me, you know, you're the only person who's running a business north and south of Ireland who's who's doing anything with spent grain at the moment. So it, it's um, it's very unique and it has a unique selling point as a result of that. Um, so and people do they do they do like when I tell a story at markets, they do like to hear all oh, oh, right. So you're taking the grain and you're making something out of it. Well, that isn't that very uh, interesting. And yeah, it is. It is very um, it's very appealing. Yeah. Right. And now here's your chance. Where can people buy um, your product? Is it on the Wall Street Brewery site? Um, no, I have. A, there's a Facebook page which I have for my product, and also there's a link there through a shop called Equid, and um, that's where you can you can you can buy the product. I also have it stocked down in Ethical Way, which is a zero waste shop down in Eglinton. Mm -hmm, um, no, it's yeah. And I also have it stocked in a place called Indie Food, which are there. Um, I don't know if you're aware of them in Cumber, outside Belfast. They are the only uh, uh, stock um, products from Northern Ireland and South of Ireland as well. Brilliant. And so, look, I ask and invite everybody to go out to, uh, after today's webinar and go out and try for themselves. So, thanks a million, Jim, or sorry, Jill and James, to both for um, giving us an overview of your story. and massive um, work done in terms of what you've achieved so far and wishing you huge success going forward as well. Thank you. Thank you. And now, Jim, delighted um, to hear from you in terms of Zero Northwest. I think you might have a presentation you want to share with us. You're on mute, Jim. Okay, hello. Can you hear me now? We can, did you? Yeah. yeah. No, before I start the presentation, I don't know, am I on the screen now? Do I come up on the screen for people now? Because I just want to talk just before I just show a couple of things. Yeah, we can all see you. Right, brilliant. Okay, no, I just wanted to say firstly, brilliant uh, presentations from Elaine and, and Nola. And, like, I mean, when we began our, our work around transitioning Derry Straban to a zero waste city uh, region, we kind of we immediately got um, uh, Liam McNally from Industrial Symbiosis just came along and just got in there behind us supporting us and, and it's been a big part of the story that I'm about to share. Um, I think Jill and James, your story is a great story and it's the kind of story we see if we become, because we're about to become the first to really authentically tackle the waste generation crisis. And, and the reason I wanted to, before us talk about PowerPoints, I just wanted to simply say that we're at the moment in a linear economy and waste is what comes out of the end of it. And what 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 the transition to a circular economy means is that you take you take the, the two ends of the, of the circular economy, instead of extracting from the earth, you bend the circle around the circle and the waste goes back in and then and then what happens is more and more resources go back in, waste reduces to zero. So waste is actually leakage from the circle. So I'm just going to, from that point of view, then just talk about, I just show this presentation. So uh, hopefully that should, uh, I should 
able to get that. Is that sharing now? Um, are we sharing that now? Are you seeing that presentation? Yeah. Okay. So what I want to say, like this is the 3rd of November, so I'm going to start here because I think this is the context in which everything that we're talking about today needs to be understood. You know, that this is, we're in this situation where, you know, that, that, that we're, 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 we're at the end of days. And if you were a biblical person, potentially, if you're, if, if, if you're, if you're more scientific person than a biblical person and, uh, and, you know, we, we have to, we, we, we have to actually as a, as businesses now, we really believe that businesses have to start to actually see what they do in the context of climate change and exercise and produce a responsibility in everything that they do. And, and therefore, you know, industrial symbiosis is, is a key part of that. And for it to fulfill its pot potential, um, it needs to understand itself in the context of transitioning to a zero waste circular economy, which is what Jill and James are doing there and, and, and their work um, and finding and, and, and what industrial symbiosis in Northern Ireland really gets already because this is why they came on board with us very early on. We generate waste when we scramble resources together and you can't unscramble eggs as we know. Um, so the key to keep them is to keep them separate and use and, and find uses for them, use, find ways for, for other people to use them, which is what industrial symbiosis is about. So we're we're working with community, consumer, municipality, and of the current linear economy. But we have a story that we think is very relevant to industrial symbiosis. So, it, 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 and, and so what is the story? Um, so, it, it, industrial uh, international evidence shows that when you, when you, um, uh, when you, uh, when you give people a clear message that that. that through collection, a collection system and education around it, citizens quickly see the benefit of, of separating their waste and transitioning it um, to, to, to a zero waste. And uh, uh, sorry, I got stuck there. The, the computer went a bit funny. So one of the key pilots we've been involved in the ground is Scandal. And it, it's the first zero waste city uh, circular economy festival in Northern Ireland. Uh, vendors use only compostable plates, cutlery, and containers collected to be returned into compost and come back to the farm as um, by natural war products. So uh, that's where we're, we're, we're the story I'm going to go on. The cans and bottles are collected and separately go to Can Can and Ballymoney, and the back of house cardboard is collected separately and goes to LCDI. So it's modeling a zero waste circular economy. Uh, transition and action. So, so what, how did we do it? Um, how did we do it? Well, the story began in 2017 with a request from John Cartwright um, that the, the, the Stendhal Arts Festival for us to come and pick up litter. And we made a counter offer. If they were really up for tackling the waste generation crisis, why not just become a festival that goes beyond and we will support them they actually become Northern Ireland's first zero waste festival. So that they actually start to change the behavior that needs to happen in all our citizens. It has to happen not just to the festival goers, it has to happen in all our citizens. So we worked with them 2017, 18, and 19, and we have now handed over the zero waste festival package to Stendhal to coordinate themselves. And we now also have that template, to, and we actually passed it on to, 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 to Anne and Derry Cities to Bandits to Council because we had generated it through that work. And now they can look at it and they are considering it now in relation to the Clipper Festival and all the other festivals that, that they're doing. But it's there for any festival in Northern Ireland. So the three key pillars of the support were education, surprise, surprise, infrastructure change, and partnership with community and business, the, the, the industrial symbiosis part. So the education, um, so the education was, um, you know, in 2017, we advised Zero West Stendhal, we, we advised Stendhal to promote the intention on their on, on their website. Um, and thereafter, we had a visible green team, and this is two members of our green team, on the site showing uh, and uh, telling people what, what was going on. There's a journey to zero waste happening here, and we're part of that journey. And by separating waste, you can actually, um, you can actually give it to other people and use it rather than wasting it. 
Um, so in 2017-18, the Green Team volunteers spent um, uh, several hours in, in the two mornings of the festival cleaning and picking up a tide of waste. Um, and there's us then collecting the cans and bringing them, getting them ready for uh, can can to come and collect. That's, that was the system they wanted for their system. That was the best way for them to have the cans and, 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 and bottles. And in 2019, the festival uh, went to our bespoke zero waste stations. So infrastructure's changed. So we, we started to build um, th these bespoke infra infrastructure stations. Um, and we, ha we have changed the behavior now of 10,000 people at that festival in 2019. So this is us building the stations. Um, you can hear stations. And that was a key part. Um, uh, the, the, we also supported Standless in setting up um, a zero waste station back of house for their own stuff so that, so that all the vendors were also doing their zero waste. But this is the public face of it here. So we were ke keen to say, look, we need the station. Uh, station obviously represents a station on the journey back into the circle. Um, we need it to be friendly. So it's bespoke for festivals. So look, this is one of the, the zones in the Standle Festival. It's a beautiful festival, by the way. If you get a chance, definitely go along to it. Very family friendly. And you can see that, that there's, there's, there's three smiley faces there and everything else is a bit sad because that's the stuff that's currently actually getting getting either incinerated or landfilled. And, and and at the moment, the very important thing about zero waste is that incinerator, once you build an incinerator, you actually have to feed it. And and incineration costs are excessive and they're technology high and people poor, whereas a zero waste solution is jobs rich and, and it's it's sustainable for the planet. Um, so from 2019, Stendhal um, has, has, has got branded reusable glasses. And a massive difference. So we started to see the key thing we have to do is start reusing. We, we, looked, at what was, we looked at what was being dumped in the ground. And there was a sea of, of, of tide of, of waste in the ground every morning. And we said, right, we need to change that. So then um, from 2020, um, the, we, we actually were also... If this is the 2019 uh, station, but in 2018, we had a very similar thing, but not as sophisticated. What we realized was that the compostable packaging, which Stendhal had said could only come onto the site, um, that it it was actually, there was nobody, the, the, the waste collector that was, that was taking it wasn't actually able to compost. It. So there was actually a gap here that we needed to find somebody in Northern Ireland that could compost the compostable packaging that the sort of in, that the that the business sector um, was ahead of the game in terms of you know green uh, sustainable or actually wasn't the the, the waste uh, re, the, re, the waste producer or the waste um, collector that, that, that or at least we hadn't found one at this point um, that was able to actually turn it in the in the compost. So um, in 2019, Marion um, discovered through her research natural world products. So now, uh, in 2019, all of that food waste and packaging went into one bin with food waste, and then it went it went to to natural world products. So that's the actual food waste going to natural world products at the end of, of the day. That's uh, Celine McGill and John Cartwright talking about um, talking about how they're going to do it, and and that's that, that's from Zero Waste Stendhal's website there. Uh, it shows that that's them advertising that we are the first festival now to become to become a zero waste, and and they started talking about that in 2017. And and the key thing about all this is, John, when he heard our counter proposal, he says yes, 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 and he has driven it forward with us in partnership. And then with our team, we have driven it forward, brought volunteers in, and now we've handed the whole thing over. To um to 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 uh, Stendhal. so Stendhal are now um, the the first zero waste festival in Northern Ireland, and this is the kind of thing that can be coming out of this city and out of this region. Because although we want to be the pioneers of it in Derry, Straban, and it'll be a beautiful thing like like what what you're doing in in, in, in the in the brewery, James and Jill. I mean, we want this to spread across Northern Ireland, the island of Ireland, and the UK. Because at the moment. 
we're going to be the first, we're going to be the first city region on these islands to actually move in this direction. So that's my presentation. Thank you for listening. And it's a great event and a beautiful to be part of it. And thank you enough for inviting us. Jim, thanks so much for your presentation. And I think it really clearly demonstrates the importance of championship or champions and leadership. And um, so with the leadership, both of you and Celine and John, you were able to Um, in terms of how they're actually delivering their festival. And it needs champions and it needs people to come forward and be part of the movement. And um, we're seeing that very, very evidently in terms of this morning's presentations. So we do have an opportunity now for Q&A. Um, I'm noticing our chat box at the moment that we don't have any questions for any of the panel members. But if you do you want to ask a question, this is your opportunity now to post it. And um, just to give you a few minutes, I can just to recap in terms of the next steps. Um, so today um, we've got this presentation. It'll be available on Council's YouTube channel. So if you want to go back over and listen to any of those presentations again, that won't be a problem. Um, you can just go to Council's website and our YouTube channel. Plus, we'll be able to circulate the presentations and the ones that we've received today in terms of PowerPoint presentations and you can go through them at your leisure. You'll see that we've given out our um, the present presenters, we're able to give out contact details um, and we'll also provide them in the cover email if there's any follow up that you want to do. But today the idea was it was the start of a conversation. It was about raising awareness and hopefully getting you excited about the possibilities and opportunities that are out there. Um, I know that both through our partnership with Invest and also with International Synergies that we'll be able to come back and maybe offer more one-to-one um, -one type um, support or that we might be able to do a resource matching workshop whereby we would actually try to match up different companies or different organisations in terms of that kind of speed dating session that um, Elaine had mentioned earlier. So look, this, there'll be more, many more opportunities following today um, and that we would like to come back to you um, as they're developed. So, look, I see um, we don't have any questions. Um, would any of the panel members like to say any concluding comments or anything before we close up? Just to really to thank you for the opportunity today to, to chat and, as I said, Please get in touch with us and, and um, happy to collaborate on anything else moving forward. Fantastic, Miller. Thanks so much. And Elaine, you're on mute if you're speaking there. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think really just to reiterate that as well, what, what Nula said is that, you know, we're here for businesses across Northern Ireland. Our work hasn't stopped because of COVID. We're still here. And particularly as businesses are seeking to try and find ways to, to be as sustainable as possible um, in this very, very difficult working um, environment that you're in. So please do give us a shout. We're, we're just on the other end of a phone. But also just to remember that this is about collaboration. I think that came be through beautifully from what Jill and James were saying. Admittedly, they're, they're collaborating within their family and, and that's that's <laughs> such a small, tight loop. The larger loops can be more complicated and that's the beauty of having a facilitated service at your fingertips here in Northern Ireland. And really, you, you should consider yourselves very, very lucky to have it. Um, the rest of the UK doesn't have one. Uh, the government won't invest in it. So, um, you know, we, we're at, we are ahead of the game here and we have an opportunity to really make Northern Ireland a, an even better place than it is already. So thank you again for the opportunity and I really appreciate it. That's great, Liam. Thanks very much. And we have um, a question from Anne Spears. Small businesses who've got minimal waste, are there opportunities for selling waste or do we continue taking it to um, our local refuge centre. Well, definitely, we've got a fantastic project locally called the Four Hours, um, who would be delighted to take your white goods um, and occasional furniture because they can actually sell them on. So there are some organisations that are ready that will take those goods. But if there's other things, um, and we'll definitely make that connection with Elaine to see if she's aware of businesses that would be interested in buying any particular waste that you have in mind. So we'll make that connection um, after the seminar. So look. Without further ado, thanks everybody for joining us. Absolutely delighted. Can I just make one comment? And that is, 
just to echo what uh, what Elaine has just said that like sh- it would it would be wrong of us not to advantage of the fact that we are the only region in the UK that's that's got this bespoke service for us, and this is why our vision is that the, the, the Dairy Strabane and the North becomes the, the, the leader in transitioning us out of the mess we're in into a, a zero waste super economy. So a really beautiful presentation for everybody. Thank you very much. Okay, brilliant. And just finally, um, we've got our mayor with us today and he would just like to say closing words. So over to you, um, Brian. Obviously, Brian, we can't hear you at the minute. Hello. Hello. We can hear you, Brian. Thank you very much. Sorry, apologies. From lockdown, um, first and foremost, um, uh, and thank you all very much um, for your your presentations, the Elaine, the Nula, and, and, and the Jim. Um, I know, and I remember probably the first presentation that Zero Waste Stars West made the council um, a long, long time ago, and I know the hard work that's gone on the um, sustaining that relationship um, and, the, and the great work that's been done um, over over the, all of those years. Um, so thank you all very much for that. And I know some of the, the organizations and some of the businesses um, that have been spoken about, for example, the four hours, in my view, is the perfect example of how um, someone's unwanted goods can become useful um, in a circular economy. And I think we've got to be trying to drive um, a number of our organizations to be, to be looking at that type of a model. I hope that from today's webinar, um, that businesses and community organizations across the area of the Fantastic Council are able to make a connection um, and, and able to, 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 to join up on how um, what potentially is uh, your unwanted or unused goods um, can be valuable to someone else um, and, and, and can help um, within their business. So thank you to uh, Elaine, to Jim, to Nula, uh, to Una, and all of the all of the team, um, to Anne and everyone behind um, putting on this webinar. I have certainly found it um, very, very useful. Um, and I hope you have as well. Thank you all very much for your participation and your sponsorship and your partnership um, with Council. Um, and I hope that we'll be able to work together um, to try and drive home the, the zero waste strategy that we're working on towards Council. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Jim, and goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Bye now. Thank you. Bye. Thank bye, you. Bye, bye. 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 Thank you very Thank much. You. What an hour. Thanks for the